हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू अवर चैनल दिस इज पार्ट टू ऑफ अवर वीडियो सीरीज ऑन लॉजिकली एंड फिजिकली एक्सक्लूसिव क्लॉक्स इन पार्ट वन वी डिस्कस लॉजिकली एंड फिजिकली एक्सक्लूसिव क्लॉक्स एंड आई गेव यू फ्यू एग्जाम्पल्स एज वेल एंड एट द एंड आई आस्ट यू वन प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट एंड आई डिडेंट आंसर दैट प्रॉब्लम स्टेटमेंट इन पार्ट वन एंड आई प्रोमिस यू दैट सोन आई विल गिव इट सोल्यूशन and in this particular video i am going to give you the solution of that problem statement only those who are interested to go through part 1 i will give its link in the description section as well as in the i bar section you can go through it otherwise now without wasting much time let us get started and see the solution of the problem statement that i asked in part 1 friends before giving you the solution let us discuss the problem statement once again This was a design given to you in part one. In fact, this design is taken from Xilinx or AMD website, and you can assume that this design is implemented inside the FPGA, including this multiplexer. And this clock zero and clock one are received on two I/O pads. Now the question was, can we declare clock zero and clock one as logically exclusive clocks? And its answer is big no. friends what is the definition of logically exclusive clocks logically exclusive clocks are those clocks which are present inside the chip or fpga like clock 0 and clock 1 are present inside the fpga chip and with the help of a logic like multiplexer only one of the clock reaches the design so here with the help of this multiplexer this clock 0 or clock 1 reaches to the design part fdm 0 and fdm 1 but clock 0 is directly passing to fd0 also clock 1 is directly passing to fd1 also fd0 and fd1 are part of our design only so we cannot say that this clock 0 and clock 1 are logically exclusive clocks in fact we cannot say that these two clocks are exclusive clocks friends if its answer was so easy then why i gave this problem statement because here lies the trick and that trick is already mentioned in the xilinx website maybe some of you already visited this website and found the trick but for others i am going to reveal it now friends the purpose of this trick is to make our timing closer easy lesser pressure given to pnr or placement routing tool and timing analyzer tool now let me reveal the trick friends if you look at the output of this multiplexer either clock 0 can pass at its output or clock 1 can pass at the output of multiplexer and the output of multiplexer is applied to the partial design that is fdm 0 and fdm 1 but the problem is clock 0 is going to fd 0 and clock 1 is going to fd 1 so directly i cannot declare clock 0 or clock 1 as exclusive clocks but the trick here is i will redefine the clocks at the output of multiplexer So first step will be create a new generated clock at the output of multiplexer with its source pin clock zero. So whatever clock is coming from clock zero and at the output of multiplexer, that clock I'm redefining clock zero max with the help of create generated clock constant. Similarly, we'll create a new generated clock at the output of multiplexer with its source pin clock one, and let us name it as clock one max. Now you can assume that there are two clocks clock 0 max and clock 1 max at the output of multiplexer and these two clocks are physically exclusive clocks because either clock 0 max or clock 1 exist at any point of time they cannot coexist so i'm making these clock 0 max and clock 1 max physically exclusive clocks it will give relaxation to the placement and routing tool and timing and laser tool so my compile time will be reduced my placement and routing time will be reduced and tool can handle the timing closure of the overall design easily it's an exception basically friends let me elaborate this concept how declaring clock 0 max and clock 1 max as a physically exclusive clock will help the timing closure just consider the case that no timing exception is declared that is clocks are not declared as exclusive clocks now in that case how the pnr tool will work for the timing closure of the design what type of register to register paths it has to analyze and make the placement and routing carefully so i have identified a type of paths 
first path will be FDM0 is working at clock 0 max and FDM1 which is working at clock 0 max. Second path is FDM0 working at clock 0 max clock and FDM1 working at clock 1 max. Third path is FDM0 working at clock 1 max and FDM1 working at clock 1 max. FDM0 working at clock 1 max, FDM1 working at clock 0 max. FDM1 working at clock 0 max and FDM0 working at clock 0 max. In this case, direction is reversed. Data is flowing from FDM1 to FDM0. Another path FDM1 working at clock 0 max to FDM0 working at clock 1 max. Similarly, FDM1 working at clock 1 max to FDM0 at clock 1 max. FDM1 at clock 1 max and FDM0 at clock 0 max. So, total 8 type of paths exist. First 4 paths are when data is flowing from FDM0 to FDM1. Highlighted yellow paths are when data is flowing from FDM1 to FDM0. So, it has to put efforts to meet the timing of all the register to register paths as highlighted. 8 type of paths. But now, giving an exception how it is out the timing analyzer tool and PNR tool, let us see. Thanks. Now let us consider the other case when timing exception is given. Clock 0 max and clock 1 max are declared as physically exclusive clocks. Then these four striked out paths will not be taken care by the PNR tool and timing analyzer tool. What are these paths? FDM 0 working at clock 0 max. FDM 1 working at clock 1 max. One max. These two clocks cannot exist together. So these are invalid paths. Pinar tool will not take care of them now. Similarly, other type of path when FDM0 is working at clock 1 max to FDM1 working at clock 0 max. Again, these two clocks cannot coexist. So these are invalid paths and Pinar tool will ignore them. Third type of path that are ignored by PNR tool and timing and laser tool. FDM1 working at clock 0 max and FDM0 working at clock 1 max when data is flowing from FDM1 to FDM0. So F clock 0 max, clock 1 max cannot exist together. So similarly last path FDM1 at clock 1 max and FDM0 working at clock 0 max will be ignored. PNR tool will only care when FDM0 is working at clock 0 max and FDM1 is working at clock 0 max. So when FDM0 and FDM1 are working at the same clock either clock 0 max or clock 1 max then only it will take care its placement and routing and similarly timing and laser tool will also take care these paths only which are working at the same clock. Other paths will be ignored. So 50% effort is reduced. Our PNI tool time will be reduced and it becomes very easy for the timing closer. Friends, this was all about that I have to discuss in this video. Now we will meet in the next video session where we will discuss the syntax of the clock constraints to declare two clocks as logically exclusive clock or physically exclusive clock with the help of the clock constraints. And with this, I am going to end this video. I hope that you would have liked it. If you have liked it, please press the like button and you can share your feedback in the comment section. And in future also, we are going to create many such videos. So to be aligned with our channel, don't forget to subscribe it and press the bell icon to get the notification of all the upcoming videos. Thank you so much for watching and your time.